Well, one of my videos has received a little bit of attention from some Magic the Gathering people in the world. Uh, I did a video this week. I did two videos this week that got a decent amount of attention uh, compared to some of my other videos. Um, and, and one of those videos was me selling my reserve list binder. I sold that reserve list binder for a good chunk of change. I put that money into what was the second video, which was me saying that I bought an eye of Ophidia. Uh, and so here's, I got a lot of uh, pushback from some Magic the Gathering players. Why would you invest in a game that is so, like it hasn't proven itself? Uh, man, why would you sell all those reserve list cards that have such good potential? And, um, you know, it's like, here's the thing. Uh, I wanted, I, I got somebody else that shot me an email. I was like, hey, Louie, could you do a video that was like explaining to my grandma, like my grandma, like, whatever, like if I were to explain to my grandma, I think he wanted to explain to his friends and grandma and people who don't understand TCGs that like, hey, you own this piece of cardboard that's worth $15,000, right? We'll, we'll talk about that. But then I also wanted to do this video that was like, what would, what would I do if the flesh and blood market crashed? Like, what would I do personally if, um, if, if Monarch came out and Monarch sucked, what would I do, right? And, and, and if the whole thing went to zero, what, what would I do? And that's why I've titled this video, When I Die, Bury Me With My Flesh and Blood Cards. Because here's the thing, like, and, and I kind of had this conversation with George from Compete Sports uh, the other day. And he was telling me that that his, when he first got into this game, when his LGS first got into this game, uh, the, the Flesh and Blood players, you know, they were Magic the Gathering players. They kind of got this box of Flesh and Blood. They played it a couple times. They said, hey, can you get more product, blah, blah, blah. And then one Friday, uh, they said, hey, can we play Flesh and Blood instead of Magic the Gathering? He was like, oh, my gosh, so he bought cards. And then they started buying boxes and keeping them sealed, not for investment purposes, but because they wanted to be able to play the game in the future. And they thought the game was going to fail because all card games fail. So here's a game, okay, that, that people just want to be able to play. And that's like when I started thinking, okay, what would I do if Flesh and Blood started to fail? And my answer was, I would buy more freaking Flesh and Blood. Like, I would just like, like if my Arcane Rising boxes, I got a couple of them, two or three of them, uh, went from four grand to like 500 bucks, like in the next two months, right? What would I do? Would I sell at 500? No! What I would do is I would freaking buy some $500 Arcane Rising boxes and I would crack them open and I would try to get an Eye of Aphidia so I could play with it again. Like, I, it's just kind of like, like, I know that I'm like the financial investment channel, like that I do the market update videos. I do, um, I talk a lot about finances, but here's the thing. I love this game. I don't, love the money side of it. Although the money side of it is nice. It is nice to buy a card and have it go up in value. It's nice to have a set where you can open a box and gain value. That's awesome. That's fun. I like that better than I like magic. Like I like that. Like that's fun. But the game is better too. Like we were playing a game of commander the other night. Um, I kind of posted a video, me and Robbie, we, you know, we, we talked with Joey, his brother and after we played a couple games of Flesh and Blood, we did it. We actually did a draft, not a draft, a sealed game of Flesh and Blood, which was a lot of fun. Uh, and then we were like, all right, Joey wanted to play Commander. So we played Commander. And none of us had a good time. I destroyed, like, my Lands Matter deck. Like, it just completely destroyed. And there was zero interaction. I won on turn eight or something like that with a huge spell that killed everybody. And there was nothing they could do about it. They couldn't interact. They couldn't do anything, which is fine. Okay, that's how the deck was built. It's my own fault. But here's the thing. Nobody had fun. <laughs> we, we all at the end of it said, Robbie texted me. He was like, I wish we would have played another game of Flesh and Blood the other night. And so, like, this is my thing. Like, if it all went to zero, what I would do is buy it at zero. Like, I would buy it. I don't know, you can buy it at zero. But I would buy it at the low prices because I love the game so much. And that is such an important part of any TCG is that the game is good. And so here's the thing. We have a lot of other stuff going on in the world. There's other card games shooting up to the same prices. And it, here's, I want everybody to remember that flesh and blood, um, was intended to be a turtle. Um, back to my metaphors, right? It was, it was intended to be a turtle that grew over time, got better over time, 
uh, and became more full over time. Did you know that like Monarch was actually like the first full set design? They worked backwards and then they released them and Monarch will kind of complete the whole, um, the whole package here. So the game gets better over time. And that's why I have so much, like I've told you guys, like all of my eggs are in the Monarch basket. Like I've invested a lot of my like energy and time into this channel. I've invested all my, you know, you saw I sold my reserve list cards into uh, buy an eye. Like I have um, put my mouth, my time, my money, my energy and my heart and my soul into Monarch. I really believe that this game is going to skyrocket and it's coming out at the perfect time right? And so here's my thing. Um, if there's any of you magic people who catch on to this video from my other videos, have you given the game a chance or are you just looking at the market and saying, there's, there is no, excuse me, guys, Hey, over there, that's not fair. You know, like you're gaining money and I'm over here opening double masters and everything's going to zero. Like, uh, like if that's you, I have to ask this question, like, have you actually looked into the game? Like, have you actually looked into it and really researched it? Have you actually played it? Uh, have you gone to cavdeansmarket.com and bought, gotten yourself for eight bucks? You can get uh, all the commons. They're free. They're, you just pay the shipping. Get all the commons. And there's a deck list there, too. Cavdeansmarket.com. There's commons and deck lists. If you're a magic player and you're bashing flesh and blood, I invite you. I will personally put the look. They're right here. They're right here. I will personally put them in a, a small flat rate shipping box and send them to you. And you can learn how to play the game for yourself. And you can understand why we are all so excited about Flesh and Blood. And again, I know I'm the finance guy. I get that. But like, it's not, like, I don't get excited about the finances. Okay, that's a lie. That was a lie. I get excited about the finances. But I get excited about the finances because I love the game and honestly, some days, honestly, there are some days that I wish that I wasn't the finance channel because I would love to do more playing. Um, but, you know, I, I want to try to make this a thing. Finances do good on YouTube, blah, blah, blah. If I can get, you know, anyway, uh, let's, let's move on. So my, my goal here is to help you who are bashing flesh and blood uh, to understand that the reason that people aren't selling their cards at 500% profits, I mean, I... 40, my profits right now, if I were to sell Arcane Rising boxes, would be 40x, 40x, if I were to sell my Arcane Rising boxes. I'm not doing it. I have, I have zero desire. I have zero, like, I'm not doing it. I have zero desire to do it because I believe in the game. I believe that this is just the floor. I believe that this is just the start of where Flesh and Blood is going to go in terms of playability, in terms of player base, in terms of all the things that matter. I don't care about the 40X. That doesn't matter to me. What matters to me is that people are really excited about playing the game because James White and his team at Legend Story Studios have put so much time and so much care and so much affection into building this game that is beautiful and that feels fun to play it feels exciting to play. So my encouragement to you, I'm going to call you Magic the Gathering hater. You are a hater from Magic the Gathering. It's to give the game a shot. And I'd love to help you do that. Um, I'd love to, to provide you the cards to play the game in order to learn that the game is really fun and to see what the excitement is about. Because it's not just about the money. The people, like, there are other things going on in the collectible card world that are just about the money and the gains and whatever. People who haven't even played. But the, the fact of the matter is that Flesh and Blood has grown slowly, kind of. Not really, but kind of slowly. It's trajected. It's, you can see a trajectory. It is like this, okay? It's not, it's not like this. It's not the skyrocket. It's it's like this. It's, a, it's an equal, gradual tear up, right? Because more and more people, every time somebody plays, they love the game. And so then they want to buy more cards. And then they're like, oh, man, I really like the game. I want something shiny and something fun to play with, just like you do with your commander decks. I mean, let's talk about it. I did the same thing. Look, let's talk, look, look at this stupid commander deck. Where's my Elena deck? Oh, we almost lost everything. Look, I did the same thing. Double Masters. I was like, oh, my gosh. Oh, I need all these shiny. Where's, where's my shiny? I need Ugin. I need a shiny Ugin. Like, you do the same thing, right? You buy the expensive, the lightning greens, the full art with the flashiness, right? Like, we all do the same things for card games. 
because we want the flashy version. And so then the people who love the game, they played the game, they bought the commons. Yeah, they, they got the free commons, right? They played the game. They loved it. They had so much fun playing. Then they're like, oh man, I want the shiny stuff. But here's the thing in Flesh and Blood, the shiny stuff is essentially reserve list. The cold foils are essentially reserve list. And so they go up in price. And that's why the price is high because people like the game. Now, don't get me wrong. I know what you're saying in the comment section. But Louis, all these whales came in and they bought all the cards. Well, that's accurate. A lot of whales did come in. Um, but here's the thing. Some of those whales play the game. I talked to one of the whales the other day. They play the game. He, he, he played the game and then he was like, hey, I'm going to buy cards because I'm a whale. Okay, he liked it. So a lot of those people also like the game and have confidence in the game. And that's why they feel confident investing their money in it. So um, anyway, bury me with my cards. I'm not selling. I won't sell. If the market turns, I'll be, I'll know about it. Trust me. Uh, you're, you're all in the comment section. Like, what if the market turns? Well, honestly, I don't, I don't care. Like, I, I'm going to sit in this room and play Flesh and Blood for the next 20 years. That's my goal. I'm, I'm going to have a live stream room in here. We're going to have cameras. We're going to have five cameras, each on each side, each player. We're going to be able to do ultimate pit fights in here. We're going to have a top-down camera. It's going to be sweet. I don't care if the game dies or not. The cards are still in the world, so I will still play it um, because I love the game. So bear with me with my cards. Uh, while you're at it, have yourself a great day. Uh, any of you Magic the Gathering haters here, I love you. I'm glad you're here. And I can't wait till you join our community and nobody will hold it against you uh, that you made some mean comments. Um, so we appreciate you. We love you. Be kind to the people around you and uh, we'll see you later.